Find the number of books that can be printed for $3,000. So now how am I reading? Where am I going to go? Yeah, I'm going to start from my vertical axis. There's 3,000 right there. So that's coming across to, looks like about there. Mm, I think we skipped okay. Did I, yeah, no? 3,000, yeah, let me, I'll just do some more dots. There you go, okay. So hopefully that's, that's convincing. That's $3,000. So now when I read down, clearly I'm between here and here. Do you agree with that? What's our horizontal scale looking like? How would you judge that? What does each square represent? Uh, 20. I think it's 20, isn't it? Like if you look carefully, let's look at the first one here. I've got one, two, three, four, five marks that get to 100. Five marks that get to 100, that's gotta be 20, right? Five twenties. So therefore here, this looks like 200, 220, 240. This is 260, which means the next one is 280. And it looks like I'm just underneath that. Are you happy with how I've read that? So I'm going to say, probably, just below, just below the 280, right? So again, I can't say 280 because I know it's not on the line. So I'm going to say, you know, say 275. That is close enough for me. I don't know how much exactly, but that's all right. Okay, now we're going to do a bit of interpretation because this is not just some random X and some random Y, okay? This is actually like quantities from the real world. So find the gradient. What is its meaning? All right, let's rub a few things off here so we can check that out. Do you remember when I showed you that, um, that graphing software before and I said, oh look, here are some triangles? This is how to find the gradient. Where are you going to look here? What points would you pick? Because we can choose. Yeah, I want something that's like close to a grid line, like an intersection. Okay. The two, the, like 180. Okay, all right, hold on, pause, pause. So I think someone said 180? 180, which is there. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Like that's pretty much bang on this point here. I'm, I'm happy with that. That's one point. I need another one. 220. That's here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to pause. I could use this. For our particular example, I'm actually not going to. And part of the reason why is that if you can imagine it this way, the smaller your scale is, the easier it is to misread it. Does that make sense? Like, for example, if I were comparing two numbers and the rise over one was like 10 take away 8 on, I don't know, um, 4 take away 3. If I'm off by 1, like off by 1 is like it's 9 instead of 10, okay? The difference between those is quite significant. What's, what's the gradient here? 2 over 1, which is 2. If I misread this 10 just by 1 and make it 9, what's the gradient now? One. It's 1. That's drastically different, right? So the smaller my numbers are, the closer they are together, the more liable I make myself to like errors in accuracy. Okay? So even though I think that would be OK, I'm actually going to look for a further one, because it reduces the error that I'm going to have. Yeah, many. Okay, 460. Okay, now that looks like it's here, which comes all the way up until, uh, where is it? Is it, am I reading it right? I'm going to draw it up. There. That looks pretty good to me. That is also, just like the one Renee picked, also pretty much on a point, but because it's so much further away, I'm going to have a better chance at getting a more accurate number rather than this happening. So let's get this down. Gradient. And I think it's helpful to write, it's rise over run. It's equal to, okay, now, have a look at the rise first. So I'm going to take part of this line off now, because now I have my, it's a bit off, now my triangle in there. I've got rise here, run here. What's the rise equal to? What's the top number? Can you read that as? It's 4,500, right? So that's where I, I'm, I've gone up to. And I have to take away whatever this number down here was, right? What is that number? Yeah, it's between 2,000 and 2,500. So that's 2,250, whatever that ends up being. Okay, so I'm going to put that in here in a second. I might as well, while I'm looking at the graph, I might as well work out the run. Okay, what's this number over here? What did we select? 460, wasn't it? So 460, and my starting point is, I think we said 180, didn't we? 180, does that look good to you? Yeah. Yeah, dot, 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 dot. Whoops, oh no, there we go. 180, so 460 take away 180. That's going to give me the run. Okay. So rise looks to me like that's 2,250. Someone can check that out on the calculator for me if they want. Um, 460 take away 180. Hmm. 
280? 280, I think. Yeah. That divided by that. Okay, I'm going to need a calculator for this one. I don't know how to do that on my head. Can someone give me a number to give me a few decimal places as well? Because I assume there'll be decimal places. Any takers? 8.035. Um, 8 Seven. Yep. Dot, 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 dot. Okay, now we've written all these, but we know, we know ourselves that these are probably not exactly on. So we're going to self approximate because we know this is not perfect. Like, what, is, what are these decimal points off here mean? Probably nothing because we were kind of doing our best on the graph. So I'm going to say, you know what? I think that's, I've run out of space just here. I'm going to say that's 8. I think it's close. Like, I think this point zero 0.03 is so, so falsely accurate. Like, I don't really know I'm that precise. Okay, now here's a really important question. That's the gradient. What's its meaning? What does it correspond to? Hmm. Do you remember? When we had a look at the, the graph, Desmos, right? I said, ooh, gradient one means you go across one here, you go up one there. Or gradient two means you go across one, you go up two. Across one, up two. So every time you go across, what are you adding? Eight. You're adding, wait, hold on a second. Every time you go across, Cross. You're adding one book. And when you go up, you're adding eight dollars, right? Eight dollars, one book. So what does that mean? Like what's the meaning of the gradient? It's the price of one book, right? That's what the gradient means in this particular on this particular graph, right? So I'm going to conclude now. I'm going to say this this number is not just a number, it's attached to a context, right? Therefore, this means each book costs, and I'm going to say approximately as well, because we knew it was approximate, costs approximately $8 to print. Okay, now we're almost finished, right? Last question, part A. What's the vertical intercept? It also is not something precise, so do your best. What does it look like to you? Yeah, so this, this mark here, which I'm not on, it's halfway between 500,000, which is 750. I'm just above that, right? So in fact, I'm even going to write that. I'm going to say just above 750. And I think a reasonable just above is 800. Now again, the important question, what does that mean? What does that indicate? Have a look at the um, horizontal axis. What, how many books are you printing over here? Nothing. You haven't printed anything at this point. So what's that eight hundred dollars going to? It's not going to books. Uh, paper. Hmm. Paper. Now I would probably say, even though paper is, I'll just finish this and then we'll pack up. Don't pack up yet. I would say paper is a thing, but I think paper is included in this. Like the more books you print, the more paper you use. I think this has to be something else apart from paper. Machine. What else could it be? Machine. Set Okay, like the machine, right? Like this printing press, whatever. You've actually got to use it first. Like you've got to get a hold of it. The factory maybe that um, is publishing these books is printing. It's going to say, you want to use my machine? You've got to pay some money just to get in the door, right? So I would call these startup costs. Okay. So this is how much it costs before you've made any books. You've got to get that $800 out of the way, and then after that, every book, $8 a piece.